I've been looking through the lore discussion channel on the Animal Well Discord server and things get pretty deep. Now this is all speculation since there are no cutscenes or dialogue to be found in the game, aside from this curious moment, but there are plenty of clues that hint at a bigger picture. Hidden murals, the artifacts left behind by whoever was here before us, and a prophecy that predicts our eventual escape from the well. Should go without being said, but this video contains mega spoilers for the entirety of Animal Well. I've put together my own version of the story using bits and pieces from all of these lovely people on the game's server, so shout out to them for bringing up some very interesting points. Now, let's get into it. In order to do that, we've gotta go all the way back to the start of our story. The birth of the blob. So personally, I don't think the player character is supposed to be anything or anyone in particular. Just a vessel for us to use to move through the well that's pretty much as plain as you can get. This story is not about us. It's about all of the animals and creatures that call this place home and their relationships with one another. It's about gradually uncovering the mystery, fitting the pieces together, and coming up with our own ideas to fill in the blanks. In the official game description, the phrase hatch from your flower is used to describe this scene. Now hatch is a very important word considering all the eggs hidden through the well and especially the fact that you need to use the 65th egg to hatch a new manticore. More on this later. As for the well itself, it's generally agreed upon that it takes the form of a torus, or a donut. That's why it wraps around on itself, and the reason that this floating shape is our ticket out. This is basically like a model of the well floating through space that we can travel in and out of. But the area that it's in is sort of locked away behind a dark and dangerous path filled with enemies and obstacles, and most wouldn't be able to survive the journey. But the blob just so happens to be so extraordinarily ordinary that they end up being the key to solving this whole mystery. But before we can truly understand our purpose in this damp place, we need to travel back even further to get inside the head of those who may have explored the well before us. It's very clear that all the tools we find are meant to be children's toys or other pretty ordinary household objects that suggest the presence of a human in the well. That and the entire house that we unlock after the first ending, complete with a TV and a computer. Now, at some point you do have to look past the gaminess of it all, like the fact that all these things are tucked away in chests located in very specific parts of the map, behind puzzles and tests of the player's game knowledge. Just forget about all that for a minute. For other stuff, it's a bit easier to come up with lore-accurate explanations. For example, all the phone save points scattered around could have been a way for previous explorers to communicate with each other when they were away from their base. A really interesting point was brought up about the save system recently. Normally, when you try to save, you just get this message. But when being chased by the manticore or the ghost dog, you just get no answer which implies that under normal circumstances, someone is answering your call. We just don't know who's on the other end of the line. And that's pretty creepy if you think about it. Speaking of creepy, I did see one theory saying the well is very similar to a zoo, with all the glass walls kind of indicating different exhibits and the way the map is split up into different biomes. I do kind of like this idea, but at the end of the day, as with everything in this video honestly, it's tough to definitively say whether or not this is true. But I think we can at least agree that at one point in time, a human did enter the well. Whether it was one lost child or an entire expedition, someone brought these objects here and fortunately for us, they ended up being pretty useful. The presence of a human also explains the murals some which are just for fun, and others that could be clues for puzzles that no one has been able to solve yet. Speaking of humans, thank you to all of you wonderful humans out there who have checked out the channel, especially my recent Animal Well videos, and an extra big thank you to my supporters on Patreon. As for the animals themselves, most of them just kind of coexist and tolerate each other, usually opting to mind their own business. And that is shown off quite nicely in this promotional illustration. 
everyone's doing their own thing. But there is one creature that's a little suspicious if you ask me. The bunny. Rabbits are an essential part of this whole story, no matter what theories you decide to run with. For some reason, they've gone into hiding, maybe terrorized by a larger creature, or even sensing our arrival, unsure what to make of us. If you've completed the BDTP, or even just gotten to the game's second ending, I'm sure you're already aware that the bunnies are the key. Another animal that seems to be wary of the blob, but curious at the same time, is the squirrel. Now, I'm not sure if it's just one squirrel throughout the whole game or multiple, but they do act as a guide, leading us to helpful tools and ultimately the four flames. Then there are what I've seen called the flame bearers, seahorse, ghost dog, chameleon, and ostrich. These four have been entrusted with guarding the keys that allow the manticore to be freed. So are they the ones who captured it in the first place? The peacock is also a guardian in a different way and watches over all the eggs you collect, making sure that what's behind these four doors stays hidden until the time is right. They mostly seem to stay out of the drama, acting as a wise protector of ancient knowledge and secrets. As for the bobcat, lynx, the big mama cat, you find her five kittens locked away deep in the mouse domain as she sits in the room helpless. Or is she? According to this mural, she's been known to terrorize innocent bunnies, but perhaps this is just the natural way of the food chain in the well. Some theories suggest that she's the one responsible for creating this factory area, forcing the mice to run on wheels. Or was it someone who came before us that did this and trapped the cat in here without her kittens? And now, a bunch of hypothetical questions to think about. Who's ultimately in charge here? Are the flame bearers trying to protect the manticore from something, or are they the ones who have imprisoned it? Who locks the kittens up? Certainly not these little bunnies, although they do have a motive. They don't seem to get along too well with mom. Maybe the mice who've been forced to work in the factory, running in endless circles. Why is this apparently important figure in the well, the ostrich, also found in a wheel? And who would hide these cage codes in plain sight? Most importantly, what is the relationship between the manticore, the bunnies, and the blob? Long ago, it was written upon stone, in disappearing ink only visible under UV light, that these three unlikely heroes would come together to solve the ultimate mystery. Why the hell does this blob turn into a moth? We find each of the 16 bunnies alone, but we can presume that at one point they lived together. Something scared them off, the cat, and maybe they even tried defending themselves by creating potions. Ultimately though, they weren't strong enough and scattered. Maybe this broke the original balance of power in the well, allowing evil forces to take charge in some areas. But others, like the peacock, believed. They knew that one day help would come. So they hid the 65th egg, the second manticore, away behind a series of challenges so it wouldn't fall into the wrong hands. That's where we come in, do our thing, free the first manticore, pass the peacock's ultimate test, and hunt down every bunny we can find, reuniting them on Space Island. Only then are we able to uncover the directions to Big Bun Island, which required our cooperation with the newly hatched manticore, who, by the way, isn't the villain in this story. Just a misunderstood creature, probably scared of the others and intrigued by this curious outsider who just appeared one day. And the big bunny, maybe the bunny leader, thankful for our help with reuniting its children, grants us the ultimate power, flight. Which I'm still so shocked that we seemingly can't use it to really do or find anything new in the game. When I first heard about it, I thought for sure that it would unlock a whole new series of puzzles and mysteries. Okay, so we have all these possible theories and threads that weave their way through the well. Some of them contradict each other, others are definitely a bit of a stretch, but I think we can all agree when I say that everything in Animal Well ties back to the lost submarine. Will we ever find a way to reach this vessel tucked away in the darkness behind a single pane of glass? A legitimate way, I mean, none of that glitchy data mining stuff. A captain must never stray from their ship for too long, lest they risk losing her to the sea forever. I kid. Or do I? 
If you're not aware, there's this one room that no one has been able to find the intended way to get into, and the theory some people are running with is that it contains a submarine, because it kind of looks like a submarine. And I like that there's still this mystery hanging over us like a dense fog, especially since the community solved a lot of the game's more challenging puzzle in just a few days. Maybe it'll take us years to figure out what the room contains. So until we do, it really could be anything. Thank you very much for watching this lore deep dive. I had a bunch of fun putting it all together. If you want to catch up on all the secrets and easter eggs in Animal Well, then check out this handy video and I'll see you all next time.